Howdy folks, and welcome to part three of Let Me Introduce My Bigger Tumbler Barrel series. We have Tumbling Nice and, pardon my reach, Gimme Shiny. And we've got the rocks reloaded. Um, this time I went ahead and added about three of these containers each of the small and large ceramic media that I got from the rock shed and we're going to be using 120 220 grit silicone carbide which I'll load up here in a second alright you can see I've got the the grit loaded in I went ahead and went with well it's you know I'm still using two two tablespoons per pound so I did Basically, I did 12 and a skosh because we've got 6 pounds and 2.3 or 2.7 ounces. So instead of rounding up this time, well, I kind of just did it the right way and added just a little bit for the 2.3 or 7 ounces. So let me get these uh, buttoned up and I'll be right back with you. All right, folks, I got uh, Give Me Shiny already buttoned up and setting on the tumbler. This is an interest of full disclosure to show you exactly the steps you have to do if you're going to use this, or at least this is what I do. Um, these caps are flatter and they don't have a ridge, so to speak, but they do have, or maybe I'd call this a ridge and the other one's a lip, I don't know, but there's a little, just a little bit of a, a lip or ridge in there. Well, you get it seated as close as you can and I just check I've got some lines drawn along where it's when it's dead when it's seated fully so I know I've got it so that's why you have to kind of whack a it to get the lid off hopefully that helps it seal um, hopefully but anyway I'll get these taped up and I'll be right back all right everybody they're loaded and ready to roll. Um, I did cheat just a little bit. I went ahead and ran it for a few minutes and I will say that the ceramic media, if it does nothing else, very much quiets things down. So that's nice. Uh, we're going to be back to you in just a split second, although it's for me it'll be seven days for you, blissfully short. No impatience to worry about. Until then, I'd like to leave you with a song. I spin these rocks round, baby, round, round, like a lapidary, round and round and round and round. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Howdy, folks. Guess what? It's Sunday. Well, wait, no, it's not Sunday. It's Monday. It's Monday, June 6th. You didn't get those things back in the barrels in, in the next stage until the next day, remember? Oh, yeah, that's right. Never mind. Sorry I fibbed to you, folks. <laughs> anyway, here we are. It's been another seven days. The rocks have been rolling round, round, baby right round in 120, 220 grit silicone carbide. Again, these are the homegrown rocks. And I think it's time to dump them out and see what we got. the interior for your inspection. Once again, after a little wishing, and now, let's get the rocks cleaned up. Really curious to see what kind of progress we made with these.
doesn't appear we got much shrinkage. It does look like the, uh, I would say overall, it looks like the patterns, what patterns there are on these rocks is more defined. Looks like the stripes are becoming a little more apparent. I would say anyway. Sorry about the issue with the autofocus in the last video. On this viewfinder it looks fine and it looked fine to me at the time but apparently you can't get really close. Now like I said in, the view, in my viewfinder that looks just as clear as can be. So sorry about the 3D movie effect. Dr. Tongue's House of Wax. Now that one's looking pretty nice. Alrighty. Alrighty, now we have Tumbling Nice. And it's lovely rock. Thank you. Now let's see what we got. Let's get some good water on it. I will note that even though all three of the small barrels thus far are showing signs of leaking to one extent or another, so far, and I mean I know this is only stage two, but these have shown no, I mean like zero anything leak-wise, which is good. Now those stripes are actually starting to show up a little better, at least on my end. You can see, like that one I hope is very obvious, but in between that and this one, there's just a series of very faint ones. It looks like the whole, la uh, whole rock is just a layer, or got built up in layers. Sweet! Yeah, this one, uh, at least, uh, like I said, on my end, it looks like those stripes are starting to uh, show up a little better, thankfully. Alrighty, folks. Well, we had a little uh, unforeseen uh, circumstances beyond our control, so I pulled these off on the 5th. And today is the 9th, and I'm just getting around to getting them back into the tumbler. Um, when we start, or uh, I, sorry, when we finished, when we started, we had 6 pounds, 14 ounces. These are the rocks out of Tumbling Nice, by the way. When we finished with stage 1, we had lost... 11.3 ounces. Well, at the end of stage two here, we've lost 5.7 additional ounces. So we're now down to five ounces or five pounds, 13 ounces. And again, I'm no expert. Everything feels much smoother. 
I I didn't dry every single rock off. I'll admit that. I dried off a fairly beefy sample out of both and looked for scratches. I didn't see any. So we're getting ready to put these back in the barrel and get started on stage three. All right, now we have Gibby Shiny uh, and its fabulous rocks. When we started life with stage one, we were at six pounds, 14 ounces. We, uh, after stage one, we were down to six pounds, 2.3 ounces. We're now down to five pounds, 12.5 ounces for a loss in stage two of 5.8 ounces. Again, everything, everything that I, I checked, and it was, I wasn't quite half of them, but I wiped off a good number of them and looked at them under magnification. I didn't see anything that jumped out at me as far as carryover scratches. Uh, I will say some of them are, are definitely starting to pop more as far as the supple, subtle stripes go and the colors and whatnot. So it seems like we're getting pretty good results. Now this one, and I very much doubt it will show on camera because they're very tiny, but anybody got any idea on this rock, I'd like to know. It has a whole bunch of little, they almost look like little metallic specks in it. You just get a little, little tiny spot of shine as you turn it in various ways. Again, I maybe if I was in 4K and you were watching on a really high D monitor, that might show up, but in real life it's it's quite stunning. But it's just sort of a, you know, like I said, cool looking rock, but I don't know. But again, if anybody has any idea on this one specifically, let me know. And this one is really starting to to stand out to me. Again, it's got some really neat inclusions. It's got a bad spot down here, which I thoroughly scrubbed out with a toothbrush because these are these are major carryover um, issue uh, causers. But uh, and there's a little crack there. And again, anything like that that had any kind of a crack or a divot, toothbrush, running water, lots of scrubbing. But this is just it's really starting to come out neat. Everything's got a very nice smooth feel to it, but let me dry this one off. You can see there's no there's no gloss there at all yet. We're, uh, we won't get that for another couple of stages, basically. Alrighty, we got both the barrels loaded up. Uh, this is again stage three we're going to start now, which is a 500 grit. This is a 500 grit aluminum oxide. And it seems like I remember most people stick with silicone carbide up until the last step, which is usually then it's an aluminum oxide polish. So I'm not sure about this. This is, uh, again, I think that, I don't know if that's just a matter of preference. This was a five pound of everything kit I got from the rock shed. And be honest, I don't know that I really noticed at the time I bought it. I just was, it had the, all four stages of the grit, so send it out. But uh, if any of you guys know specifically if there's any issue with using 500 of the aluminum oxide for this step, please let me know. Um, hopefully, I hope it works good because we're loaded up and ready to go. So let me get these buttoned up and on the tumbly. Alrighty folks, just a little bit more jibber jabber and I'll let you go. Uh, got everything oiled up, ready to go. Filled my little greaser, my oil cups and stuff. Uh, got everything taped up. One thing I noted, the uh, my belt was getting a little eh. This is actually a big O-ring and it goes from there to there to transfer motion to the idler. I guess it's technically not an idler. A lot of these just have one drive and they've got an idler. But anyway, I figured that didn't look like it was in such good shape. Well, I had a problem with the other one. The, uh, the belt on that or the O-ring on that was pretty badly checked. 
Well, I did some checking and I found this wonderful place called oringsandmore.com and let me tell you what, brothers and sisters, if they don't have it, it doesn't exist. I I don't know how many pages of of o-rings they've got, but I I kind of had an idea on size and I ended up buying about five in each. The one I was pretty sure and then I bracketed up and down a little bit just to cover my bases because they weren't terribly expensive. So the other thing I wanted to point out, I was speaking to Mr. Ron last week and I said, you know, with both barrels go or both tumblers going, the things are getting confusing. I really need to have Heather make me a spreadsheet so I can keep better track of this. And Mr. Ron's response is, what would, what would be the problem with putting a sticker on the barrels? You know, with the details. And I sat there quietly for a minute and I thought, well, I'm a giant idiot. So, Mr. Ron, I do appreciate it. And this is, the, this is what I came up with. My blue painter's tape. We've got stage 3, 500 grit, aluminum oxide, start date, end date. So, guess what, folks? I'll see you on the 16th. Thank you for watching.